as a, a Tigers great, watching the Tigers the last couple of seasons uh, or the last season, how difficult did you find it and we, did you kind of want to get back on court yourself? I think the last thing they needed was another seven-footer. Um, no, look, it's, it is, it's, it's always difficult to, to watch a team you care a lot for and are very grateful for what they provided you struggle. Um, having said that, it, yeah, it was probably a calculated risk. I think they went obviously very big, I think as big as the NBL has ever seen. Um, and there was always a chance that I'd like to compare it to the Hawthorne Footy Club that beat Geelong in the grand final. That I think one of the main reasons they did that is because they were so different and they were unique to the league and teams weren't used to playing against them. I think the Tigers potentially could have been that. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't quite gel and it went the other way. But um, yeah, it was hard. But um, look, sports like that, you have your ups and downs and I'm sure they'll bounce back and I hope it's quickly. What do they need to do in order to bounce back, do you think? Hard to say. They've obviously made a lot of changes. Um, as big as they were last year, they're probably that small this year. Um, that, from what I understand, they're probably one of the smaller teams in the league. Uh, yeah, Matty Burson, their only true centre this year. So I'm sure they'll be a lot more up-tempo. Uh, they'll have a completely different style of game, which will be unique to Tigers fans, I think. They've grown accustomed to watching first and thirds and variations of it. Um, so it'll be totally different. And you know what? Sometimes that's good for a club. Um, it's an entire change. It, yeah. I hope, look, I, I just hope they do well, but it, it's a really, who knows? It's uh, the league's so even these days that you're just never quite sure. And two or three losses can just really throw you out of finals contention early on in the season, as it did for the Tigers last year. The Tigers obviously did a, a huge couple of signings early on with uh, Ayendi Ubaka and uh, Daniel Dillon and, of course, um, Ronald Dorsey. So three of the, the guys who started for the Taipans who ran up, were runners-up this year. How do you rate those, those signings? Do you think they're going to make a, a significant impact for the Tigers uh, this season? Yeah, they'd have to. Um, I think the absolute strength of those three signings is the fact that they're comfortable together and I think when you're assembling a new team the more players you've had that have played together the, the better you'll be they they have an understanding for each other they've proven to be successful around each other and you know what they they may not be the the most talented players in the in the country but I think they're all very talented um, they provide a different look to what the Tigers had this year they're all quick uh, they're all athletic and they provide yeah it's a different style of game so um Look, it's, uh, they could have gone a number of ways. The, the way they've gone has a lot of merit to it. And the, the beauty of it is that Trevor Gleeson got the team he wanted. And I think that's all we can ask for as a new coach coming to a club. Speaking of new coaches, obviously there was some controversy around Trevor Gleeson's appointment, uh, obviously the coach of the year. And, and as uh, Seamus McPeak said, uh, you don't often get the chance to sign a coach of the year. Um, how do you think, obviously Darrell McDonald was the incumbent. How do you think the signing will go for the club do you think it was the right thing to do yeah look I think as Seamus said you, you you don't get that that opportunity that often and I love DMAC as a player I love him as a coach and I, I, I have no doubt DMAC will be an outstanding coach given the opportunity um, unfortunately there aren't that many jobs in coaching in basketball in the country so I really hope he picks one up here soon um, if not somewhere else uh, to lead him back here again but uh Look, Trevor's record, I think, speaks for itself. It's a fresh face. It's an entirely different look. And sometimes change in itself, regardless of the type, brings success. So uh, I, I think it's a good signing. Um, I think DMAC would have been a good signing. I think they were fortunate to have probably two or three options that they could have gone with. You would have looked at, uh, evaluated and said, yeah, you know what, good decision. The grapevine has it that you're actually doing pretty well in your own coaching uh, <laughs> career as well. Uh, do you uh, have aspirations to perhaps come back and even coach the Tigers at some stage? Oh, oh, that's a stretch, but uh, I am really enjoying my coaching. It's, uh, I'm learning a lot and I'm, I'm really enjoying probably a different bit of a different perspective on the game, but I think I've come across the last 12 months a lot of players or ex-players who, who coach basketball because they love the sport and being late into the sport, I really enjoy the sport, but what I love is what the sport's able to provide young players and young, uh, young kids. Um, I learned lessons from some amazing mentors, you know, probably most of them from, from Brian Gorgian. Uh, also learned a lot about what not to do uh, in my time over my career. So those guys aren't gonna be around forever and I feel that the knowledge I've learned has set me in really good stead to, to be successful 
both on the basketball floor and away from it. And if I can help share some of that knowledge with, with young kids that, that help them be successful, and that's, that's fantastic. But I'm enjoying it. Um, you know, the Caulfield Grammar boys are, are going well and my, my Camberwell Dragons are, are sitting on 10 and 5. Now, that's interesting coaching my two little brothers. That's a whole different thing again. I don't know how Lindsay did it with his son. But, uh, look, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I hope to do it for a long time. And, uh, look, I'm learning as much from it, hopefully, as the people underneath me are, are learning from me. Um, speaking of young players, Lucas Walker, obviously a young player for the Tigers, pretty exciting, pretty athletic, um, and there seem to be quite a few young players in the league at the moment that are, are doing particularly well, you know, Luke Cooper and, and uh, obviously the like. Do you see the young talent coming through as being, you know, of, a, of as good a quality as in your day or even better? I, I never want to say better. Um, no, I, I really do, and I think, you know, Lucas Walker, to use him as an example, I think he's as good an athlete as this league's seen in a lot of years. He's a He's a Sam McKinnon type size, uh, similar type athleticism and has that kind of ability to, to really dominate a game with his physical presence. Um, he's matured a lot the last 12 months and I think he'll be a, an outstanding player in this league and you know, future boomers thrown around a lot but he definitely has the potential uh, if, he can, uh, you know, if he can be that or perform at a consistent level. Um, being involved I think in junior sport as I have the last 12 months, um, I'm actually really excited about the the next level of, of kid coming through. Um, the, I think the 16s and 18s boys that I've seen have outstanding potential. Um, the ones I've come across have their heads screwed on right, and I think as a basketball fan, I'd be really excited about what the next three or four years has to offer. Have you got any names you want to share with us that you think might come through and actually be NBL prospects? Well, well, yeah, Cecil, uh, Dante Exum, I think Jack Purchase, uh, Dane Penosa, all sons of players who have had good NBL careers and then there's a lot of others um, and I don't want to name it because I don't want to put pressure on the kids but um, look it's really exciting and I'm fortunate to coach two or two or three at, at Caulfield Grammar and you know if I can play some really small part in helping them prepare to be elite then you know I will really I suppose cherish the time I've spent with them and look back as they go on to better bigger and better things and be thankful for the time I spent with them towards the start of their career. You're involved in some of the classic crosstown rivalries uh, in Melbourne um, during your career. Do you miss having a second Melbourne team in the NBL? And would you like? To, I know there's obviously been talk about the Melbourne camouflage and other possible possibilities. Would you like to see a second Melbourne team back in the league? What, what does it mean to the the NBL to have a second Melbourne team? Yeah, I would. I can't speak on behalf of the NBL, but as a player, it was it was outstanding. They were our marquee games. They were the ones you, you really got up for and had that different level of anxiety for. And yeah, Melbourne can definitely cope with a second team. I think there will be one. Um, you probably know better than me, but um, I'd love to see it based out in Knox. Um, I still don't think the tennis centre is going to work short term. Uh, with the involvement of local associations and from what I hear, the, the model is fantastic. Um, it'd be great to put a team out in the eastern suburbs. It's a direct rival to the Tigers and really start promoting that rivalry again, getting the, getting the juniors involved and I think creating pathways to both Melbourne teams uh, for these young kids we've just mentioned. Sitting back as a retired player watching the NBL now, uh, have you seen it evolve much um, in, the, in the last couple of years? I mean, you're you seeing it starting to, to move to a different level and what changes have you seen? It's, it's definitely become a lot more perimeter. Um, it's a lot faster and you know, it, it evolves in different ways every year and I think as soon as a team wins it, People try to copy the, the style of play that that is proven successful, and yeah, look, it's. I, th I think one thing the league is really crying out for, though, is another absolute superstar that people want to come and look at. I think the league's really, really even at the moment, and I guess sitting in the stands and listening, some of the feedback you hear is that every team that comes in is a bit the same. Um, love to see two or three personalities come in and really take over the league. Um, in the most unselfish perspective possible, but you know your Andrew Gaze, your Rob Rose, your Leroy Loggins, uh, those kind of players who will come in. You know Sam McKinnon back in my day as a junior, just a, Joe Ingles would, would be great if he was still here. Just a young player come in, or an import come in that's just really exciting to watch, draws crowds no matter what city they play in. I think, and hopefully gives the league a shot in the arm that it probably needs. Thank you very much. You're welcome.